guys, we are back. Good evening, good morning, or good afternoon. As always, it is so great to see you. And friends, today's video is going to be much different than our normal programming on this channel. Instead of reviewing the latest photography news or doing a how-to video, I want to tell you a story about someone that fought in World War II. Now, stick with me on here. I promise you, you're going to see how this connects or how I'm going to connect this to photography. But before we dive into this video, I have to ask you to do me a huge favor. You see, we put these videos together every single week. Well, not on this topic, but you get the point. We put a lot of videos together for you to help you to stay informed or to help you make better decisions on things relating to photography, your cameras, this or that. So if we were successful in helping you out, if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit that like button down below. It really does help this channel out with the whole YouTube algorithm. When you like the video, YouTube's going to share it with more people, getting more people aware of this channel, which my friend, we are trying to go. So now you can see how you hitting that little like button down below is very very, very helpful to the channel. That said, my friend, pull up seat and let's go. Now, as you might recall from your high school history class, the United States became actively engaged on the battlefield of World War II after the bombing of Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. But the war actually began far sooner or earlier, September 1939, after Nazi Germany invaded Poland. Now, that invasion triggered declarations of war by France and Great Britain against Germany, who had signed treaties with Italy and Japan to form the Axis powers. Now, while the United States supported the Allied cause at the beginning of the war with money and supplies, it wasn't until after Pearl Harbor that we put boots to ground in massive numbers. Now, Obviously, there's a lot of details about the war that we just simply do not have the time in this video to discuss, but I just want to give you some context here. Now, it was the deadliest war in history with an estimated range of 60 to 80 million people dead. Among the dead were 6 million Jews who were murdered at the hands of the Nazis. Civilians comprised between 50 and 55 million of the dead. Countless millions were injured on and off the battlefield. Billions of dollars in damage was done to public and private property throughout Europe, North Africa, and the Pacific. And more than 12.2 million Americans had served in the war. Out of those, 761,278 Americans were killed and approximately 130,000 Americans were killed, or excuse me, 130,000 Americans were captured as prisoners of war. Now, one of those POWs was a man from New York and his name was Herbert M. Carnes. Carnes was born in Detroit on November 30th, 1925. Now, when he was just 17, he joined the New York State Guard and got transferred to active duty in the Army, where he was assigned to the 106 Army Infantry Division. Now, Carnes was deployed in the unit to Europe, where he fought in the Battle of the Bulge. Now, the Battle of the Bulge was a crucial time of the war. Now, Hitler's goal was to divide the Allied forces as they pressed towards Germany by launching an offensive in the Ardennes region of Belgium. Now, the battle began December 16th, 1944, and lasted about six weeks through the depths of the frigid winter. The Battle of the Bulge had begun. More than 50 German columns were now attacking through the Ardennes. There were penetrations everywhere. South of saint vith the 28th Division was split. Chaos ruled to the east, where most of the 106th was surrounded. General von Manteuffel's forces were approaching saint vith itself from three sides. At stake was not simply a town, but the timetable of the Ardennes counteroffensive. And it was already one irrecoverable day behind. Now, the Nazis attacked British, French, and American troops with such vigor that they caused kind of this bulge in the Allied line. Thus, the name of the battle. The Allies held strong and were able to repel the German advances. Now, this was important because it was the last major attack by Germany and the Allied victory in the Battle of the Bulge paved the way to invade Germany and eventually end the war just a few months later in May 1945. But it came 
at a cost. The Battle of the Bulge resulted in 100,000 American casualties, the most ever in any single battle in the U.S. Army. Herbert Carnes was one of the many injured in battle. On December 17, 1944, the second day of fighting, he was shot in the arm and the bullet lodged in his neck. Now, he was captured along with others in his unit and they were put in boxcars and then taken to a hospital via train. Now, once at the hospital, a German doctor pulled the bullet out of his neck. From the hospital, Carnes was transported to Stalag 11 Bravo POW camp. Now, once unloaded from the train, the POWs were put in cars and dumped in front of the prisoners where guards then beat and kicked them severely. And guys, this abuse continued on a daily basis. For example, if a POW had a toothache, the tooth is pulled out with no anesthesia. There was mental abuse as well. If a POW died, the survivors were forced to pray the deceased around the camp. Typically, Carnes and other POWs lived on turnip soup which was made from grass. And although the American Red Cross sent packages to the camp, the Germans sold most of them before the packages even got to the prison. That meant a single box could usually be shared by 16 prisoners. Now the struggle to survive in the camp lasted until April 1945, when the camp was liberated by a 7th Armored Division of the British Army. And while Carnes managed to survive, he had lifelong effects from the wounds on the battlefield and the abuse in the POW camp and he was never able to lift his arm higher than his shoulder because of extreme pain and he also had difficulties in his neck where the bullet was lodged now fast forward after the war, Herbert built a good life for himself. He married Marguerite Gallagher, who had also served in the army as well. And he went on to work for a steam plant in New York. And together, Herbert and Marguerite had four kids, three of whom went into the service. And they also had numerous grandchildren that went into the service as well. One of those grandchildren was me. Herbert Carnes was my grandfather, and he was one of the people who inspired me and many people in my family to serve our country. Out of his kids, he had two that went to the army and then another one was both navy and air force and then out of the grandkids uh i was army reserves uh my brother or one brother he was in the marine corps uh the other brother he is still in the army um i had a sister that was air force and i feel i'm forgetting somebody but anyway a lot of folks a lot of people in our family were influenced by our grandfather So you might be wondering, how does all this relate to photography? Well, I was recently visiting my mother and realized that she didn't have any large prints of my grandfather on her wall. And this really struck me as strange because my mom was really close to her dad. And since many of us in the family have served in the military, my mom's home is a very patriotic one. So the light bulb went off in my head. I wanted to give my mom a print of my grandfather as a gift. And now I've spoken to before about the power of printing photos, how it benefits us as photographers to see and touch and hold the print in our hands. But there's another kind of power of prints and that is to honor the people that we love. You see, we all have special people in our lives that have influenced over who we have become and what we've done in our lives. But honoring the legacy of these people is hard to do if the photos you have of them are in a box in the attic. So since my grandfather was a hero to his kids, his grandkids, the nation, I felt it was important to give my mom a high quality print that she could hang on her wall. Not only does a print like this give my mom a way to remember my grandfather, but it acts as a way for the rest of us to honor him as well. Now, every time we walk into my mom's house, we'll see grandpa's purple heart in this print of him and have a moment to remember what an incredible person he was. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not that we would never think of grandpa unless a big photo of him was on the wall, but a print simply serves as a reminder and gives us a place and a time to reflect on who he was. And that, my friend, is the power of a print. A print isn't just some ink on a canvas. We place so much meaning on a printed photo, it becomes a memorial for people that have passed away, a vessel for remembering times gone by and means by which you can feel connected to others that you may or may not still have in your lives. Now, those of you that know me know that I love printed photos like this. My house is full of them, in fact. And I love to give the gift of a print as well. I mean, think about it. What better gift is there? A print is something special. It takes thought and care to make, and it's a gift that keeps on giving for decades to come. And speaking of which, actually, let me take off. This literally just came in, and I was debating on whether or not, because I'm going to forward this 
ship this out to my mom, but I wanted to see it first and share this with you guys here. And I was reluctant to take it out of the package here, but I guess I can rewrap this back up. I'm gonna my receipt and all my stuff here. Tell me about that. This just looks so super awesome. Okay, so guys, I know what you're thinking. Big prints like this are expensive, but that just isn't the case here. See, this print right here, I get this from Canvas HQ. You've heard me talk about these guys many times over because I love the prints. This print only cost me $72 after I applied a 25% off coupon that they had. That's really a great price for a print of this size and quality. And I also added, this is something I added, which I've not got from these guys because they just added these things on. They had these new floating frames over this thing, which was only 46 bucks for this thing, which this is actually my first time seeing it outside from the plastic there. This looks absolutely gorgeous. And it is so, let's see if we can get that in without, it's funny, my camera's autofocus is now locked onto my grandfather's face. That looks fantastic. I am so super happy with this. I know my mom's gonna absolutely love this as well. Now, really guys, the key here is quality. If you've seen my annual canvas print shootouts, and actually, ironically enough, we've just started releasing some of them for 2021, but you know that all canvases are not made alike. Some are just simply not up to this stuff. And that's why I went with Canvas HQ for this print. They've won our canvas shootout in 2019 and 2020 for a reason. These prints are incredible with beautiful detail. Color is just really spot on. An intention of craftsmanship that I found to be lacking in prints that I've ordered from so many other companies. Now the holidays are gonna be here before we know. In fact, our holiday gift guides are coming out really soon. So if you haven't begun thinking about what you wanna get your loved ones this year, think about getting them a print. Like I said before, a print is something that goes far beyond, it transcends far beyond being a gift. It's a way to remember and honor people that you love in your life. Prints become a story as well, just like the story of my grandpa that I shared with you earlier. Now, when I tell my son about my grandfather, I can do so in front of the print. In my mom's house, he'll be able to see who his great grandfather was and it'll make the stories much more real. And that, my friend, is the power of a print. As usual, I wanna wrap up today's video by reminding you of our current giveaway. Here are the prizes that we have available. A F-Stop Toyota Series camera bag, a Haida M15 filter holder and filters, and of course, the old faithful $100 Adorama gift card. As always, entering the giveaway is really simple. Step one, like this video, subscribe to our channel. Step two, leave a comment below. In fact, the more of our videos that you watch and leave a comment on, the more chances that you have to win. So get watching some of our other videos and leave some comments. Step three, register on Photography Talk and introduce yourself in the form. Now, if you registered on the site during one of our last giveaways, you're still eligible to win. But as I keep saying over and over again, swing on by, say hello. We would love to see you. And that is it. For complete details on the giveaway, including how to register on Photography Talk and how to say hello in the form, check out the description below. Good luck. All right, guys, there you go. This is another one of those videos that I, you know, it seems like I say this quite often, but I get excited. I really do get geeked out creating these sort of videos that can potentially help you, uh, inspire you. And when I was coming back from Arizona with this whole idea coming into mind uh, for this here, and I wanted to share this experience with you guys. So this was, again, another one of those exciting moments to put together. And I really, truly, man, I cannot wait to hear what my mother thinks of this print here. I think this turned out beyond just absolutely, I mean. Absolutely love the print. Anyways guys, it's that time of the video where I'm gonna ask you to do all that YouTube stuff that really does help us out. We put these videos together to help you, inspire you, help you make educated decisions or help you stay informed in the industry. If we were successful in doing that, as I shared with you earlier, do me a favor, hit the like button. It really does help that the channel out in growing and so forth. And if you're not subscribed, hey, we have all sorts of fun here. We would love to have you part of the community. And while you're at it, smash, kick that bell, so therefore you're notified each time that we come out with a new video. My friend, I'm gonna be jumping out of my studio here so you get out there, stay healthy, and create your best shot.